Church and our online family and friends. Thank you all so much for joining us on this morning. We're going to ask that you stand to your feet as we give God praise, give Him honor, and give Him glory for just allowing us to see another day. Our song this morning is, I Just Want to Praise You.
like Jesus. And the idea is to follow him. The songwriter said that if Jesus came to the songwriter said it can't be done. If he can't take it to the top, you won't get there. Hallelujah to the Lamb. Won't well, we thank God for who he is and what he's already done? He is such awesome and such a great God. Hallelujah to the Lamb. He is. He is the amazing, he's the amazing God, and he's given us another chance, another privilege, another opportunity just to come here to say thank you. Are you thankful to our God? Are you thankful to him for him? He's given us another chance, and I'm so glad about it. God has given us one more day and another chance. Hallelujah. People went to sleep last night. And didn't rise this morning. He has given us one more gift to come here today and just say, Lord, I thank you. Thank you for another chance, another opportunity, another privilege. We have we have come again to just say thank you. Did you wake up this morning and say, Lord, I thank you? Lord, I thank you for another privilege. Lord, I thank you for another opportunity. We've come today just to say, Lord, I thank you. Even if you want to ask him for something, you ought to say thank you for who you are and for what you have already done. We serve the awesome and the amazing God. And the Bible says he's here. We don't have to wait for him. He's already here. And that's why we celebrate him. He is. Almighty God. Let me call your attention to Ezekiel chapter 37 in the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, the book is Ezekiel. The chapter is 37. I want to look at the first eight verses. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 8. In the Old Testament, the man of God is equal. God has blessed us one more time to hear his word. And let me tell you, it's a privilege. It is an honor. It's another great opportunity to come together to hear the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Ezekiel chapter 27, verses 1 through 8. When you found it, you will discover these words. 37. In, two, in four months, I'll be 60. <laughs> Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 8. I was about to speed read on you, too. <laughs> my, my, my. Now I got to read through all the writing I have in here. Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 8. When you found it, you will discover these words. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around, and behold, there were very many in the open valley, and indeed they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know. Again, he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus said the Lord God to these bones, surely you will cause, I will cause breath to, to enter into you and you shall live. I will put sinews on you and bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live. 
then you shall know I am the Lord. Amen. So I prophesied as what I prophesied as I was commanded, and as I prophesied, there was a noise and certain and suddenly a rattling. And the bones came together, bone to bone, immediately. Indeed, as I looked, the sinews and the skin came upon them, and the skin covered them over, but there was no breath in them. I want to talk about you will live again. You will live again. We look at the text of the man of God. Ezekiel is concerned with the nation of Israel. God himself was concerned with the nation of Israel. This valley of dry bones is a representation of this nation of Israel. When I look at the text, I'm reminded of the nation of the United States of America. This weekend, this weekend marked the anniversary, one year of January 6th. And when we mention January 6th, now everybody knows what happened on January 6th. When we look at January 6th, I looked at this whole documentary this past weekend. And they say that the boys in the hood are hooplers. But when I looked at men and women climbing the Capitol wall, I saw some hooplers. I saw hooplers. I saw hoodlums. I saw men and women who have given their lives for adultery. They have given their lives and they are still donating their lives for one man. And they are passing on this situation that the election was stolen. When I look at the United States in the nation in which we live, I see Israel over and over and over again. You see this nation that was spread out in this valley, full of dry bones, were there because of their lives and their lifestyle. They were there because they had, they had sinned against God. When we look at the text, Ezekiel points out the fact that Israel was disjointed. Israel was discouraged. And Israel was devastated. When we look at the text, we find out that in the midst of a body of people, we can be disjointed. We can be in the same room, we can be thinking similar things, but because we're not walking with God, we can find ourselves disjointed. Israel was so disjointed until there was a bone over here. There was a bone over there. There was a bone up there. There was a bone back there. There was bones, the Bible says, there were many bones and they were scattered throughout the valley. So they were disjointed. They were scattered bones. They were disjointed bones. They were not on one accord and they were not connected. They were disjointed. I stopped by on my way to the rapture to let you know that if you forget about the God we serve, you will find yourself disjointed. If you walk away from God, young people go off to college and they grew up in Sunday school and, and now they have a degree and now they're thinking that they have a new God that they can serve. It's only because they got disjointed. People in marriages, they one person let the little girl in her rise up. The, the, the other person lets the little boy rise up in him. And it's because they want their own way that they are disjointed. 
Even though they had pledged their lives to each other for better and for worse, for richer and for poor, in sickness and in health, and forsaking all others until death do us part. Now, two weeks later, they are disjointed. I remember, I remember celebrating my, my parents' 37 year anniversary, 37 years of being together, and mama wanted to go out and celebrate and bring the family, and daddy said, I just want to sit at home and do nothing. So I made that 600 mile call, and I said, daddy, let me just share something with you. You've been married for 37 years to the same woman. People don't stay married 37 minutes in the 21st century. And he said to me later on, only thing it took is for you to say those simple words. And from that point on, from 37 years all the way to 52 years, he's been going out celebrating. My Lord, my Lord. It's because life can disjoint you. You feel like your life has been disjointed from a person. Your life has been disjointed from, from a thing. Your dreams have been disjointed. Somebody's asking God this morning, God, when are you going to come through? God, God when are you going to do something? God, God, I've been coming to you and you said all I have to do is ask. You said all I have to do is make sure I knock. You said that the door will be open if I knock. God, you said that if I seek, I will find. And here I am, moments later, minutes later, weeks later, years later, and I'm still knocking, Lord. And it seems like my prayers are like bouncing ping pong balls, hitting the ceiling and dropping back to the floor. Lord, when are you going to rise? God knows best. He has but not forgotten you. It's just we live in a society that's been disjointed. We live in a society where right begins to look like wrong. Where wrong begins to look like right. We've been disjointed. I said to somebody the other day that somewhere between this generation, my generation, and the generation that's in control now, we lost some things and we didn't pass down some things. And, and we don't let our children, we don't make our children say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am, anymore. We lost some things. Our generations have been disjointed. When children can walk up to grown folk and tell them where to go. Our generations have been disjointed. When, when parents have to put a boat lock on their door because they're afraid of their children that's living in their house, our society has become disjointed. And because we are so disjointed, we're looking to everything to try to make us whole. We need to know that he can't fix it. She can't fix it. They can't fix it. And it can't fix it. We have become as Israel. We have gone on to follow our own gods. If you read the Sunday School Review uh, before we got here, you would know that Ezekiel chapter 37 is found in the, the daily reading. And, and when you read it, you will find out that Israel had turned their backs on God. I plead to you today to understand that the United States of America, the great superpower, where we are, are in the land of the free and the home of the brave, we have walked away from God. Told, told them on Wednesday night that we didn't have metal detectors in our schools. We didn't even have to have a resource officer in our schools. The coaches and the men on the campus had sparked fear into us. But we have become disjointed. Second thing I say to you is the nation of Israel as well as the United States of America has become discouraged. When we get to the second part uh, next week, we'll find out that, that they had become discouraged. They, re they, they reminded God of what they were not. I said, God, we drive. God, we are separated. God, we are even dead. I stopped by to tell somebody this morning, you will live again. Amen. 
if you, if you do the right thing, I'm not talking about playing the cards right. God doesn't dibble and dabble in cards. When, when you do it God's way, he will fix it and you will live again. The sparkle that you used to have in your marriage can come back because of God. The children that are disrespectful now can, can gain some respect because of God. Let me tell you, your grades that are suffering right now, they can come back to life because of God. The attitude of your spouse, the attitude of your children, the attitude of your mama and your daddy. Because, you know, children know how to tell you when their parents got an attitude. They say stuff like, oh, they're old folk. They don't know what they're talking about. The internet wasn't even around when, when they were my age. But children, let me just serve notice on you. We didn't get old, great, and bald but for being a fool. It's because if we knew who God was, we know who God is, and we know God is going to continue to bless because he is God. Here we are. Nearly a hundred years later. And we re still reciting the statements that Big Mama used to say. She said, baby, the same bridge that brought me over. is the same bridge I'm going to cross to get back home. It's because she didn't have a college degree. It's because she didn't have a high school education. It's because she didn't even have a third grade education. But she had connection with God. And with that connection with God, she kept a positive attitude. When I was in college, we, 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 our college was located in Big Mama's hometown. And we would go over there. My friends loved going over Big Mama's house. Young folk, if you don't like old people, you better get to know them. My, all my classmates, they would love it. Then some of the jokers that was down there wood shopping machinery came and walked over to Big Mama's house with us. Because then when you're in college, you don't have, have a whole lot of money. And so we would walk over Big Mama's house, and when we would get to Big Mama's house, before we got in the door, we could smell the hot water cornbread. We could smell the greens walking down. And let me tell you, to a college student, a good meal that sticks to your guts will do you really good. She didn't have the education we had. She wanted to make sure we stayed in school. She wanted to make sure we did the right thing. But she had connection with God. And she wasn't discouraged. We have young folk today that they get discouraged because they don't have enough likes. Because people don't comment on their posts. Let me tell you, little girl, let me tell you, little boy, you are more than a post to God. Amen. You are more than an Instagram post. You are more than a Facebook post to God. You are somebody. You are beautifully and wondrously made. Great are the handiworks of God. And this I must tell you right now. You are special. Yes, Stop getting so discouraged when, when people walk away from you. You have to get to a point where you say, see, you didn't want to be. All right. You have to get to the point to know when you trust God and you walk with God, God is able to keep you regardless of what you're going through. All right. All right. So they were disjointed. They were discouraged. And they were devastated. The world in which we live today is so easy for people to get devastated. The least little thing that happened, they will get devastated. They would get devastated to the point of no return. Yeah. They would get so devastated that they didn't want to get up out of the bed. Yeah. They would get so devastated that they go through the whole day and have not accomplished anything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's because the devil can devastate you. Right. And as long as I was popping with the devil, mm -hmm. as long as I was walking with the devil, as long as I was spending time with the devil, the devil knew how to make things look good, made me feel good, and made me feel good about it. And that's what Eve went through. It was the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, and the pride of life. And once the devil gets you up high, Brother Miles, he'll pull the rug out from under you, and you will take a terrible fall. You will be devastated. Even if you're devastated this morning, let me just share with you, you will live again. The 
question was asked in the documentary about January 6th when they stormed the Capitol. The question was asked, is there any hope after January 6th? First of all, is there any hope for the grand old party after January 6th? Well, it's playing out right now. Let me tell you, Big Mama had another statement. She said, you lay down with dogs, you get up with fleas. Now, over 200 full-grown folk have put all their trust into one man, and he has walked away from them, and now they're packed with fleas. They can't even make a, just a one consensus, one even, one even good decision now. It's because we cannot put our faith, our hope, our trust in any man. When we look at the text, Ezekiel chapter 37, verses 1 through 8, first of all, I want to say to you that we must find ourselves in the presence of the Lord. The, the writer says, the writer says, the, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of a valley and it was full of dry bones. Let me just share with you this morning, you need to make sure that you're in the Lord's presence. Don't wait till you get in trouble. Don't wait till your car begins to hydroplane to call on him. Don't, don't wait till you have a doctor's diagnosis to call on him. Don't wait until a friend, a foe, uh, or a, a family member walks out on you to call on him. Call on him on a regular basis. You need to be in the presence of the Lord in good times and in bad times. The, the good thing about it, the good thing about it, the good thing about being in the presence of the Lord, the Lord knows who you are. He knows where you are in your life. He knows how to handle life on your behalf. When you're in the presence of the Lord, you create a fellowship with him. And when you create a fellowship with him, he's able to walk with you even before you ask him. Yes, we ought to pray. Yes, we ought to communicate with him. We ought to have a dialogue with him. Him talking to us and us talking to God. Because God has favored us. The Israelites were, were favored. They, they, they knew they were favored. They bragged off their, themselves being favored. You need to know that God has favored you. Stop getting injections. God has favored you. Stop wasting money on, on stuff that plastic surgery. God has favored you. Yes. You wasting money to get to look like them and they spend a lot of money to get to look like you. God has favored you. It is, it is in our DNA, our structure, our body. I look at the BMI. You know what the body mass index is? I look at the BMI. I said if I get the down to that side, I have a big head with a small body. I mean, I would have huge hands in a small body. I have a big old head in a small body. So you can't trust your BMI to get you healthy. All you can do is sleep well, eat well, exercise well, talk to the Lord about it, make sure you get plenty of sleep, and if it still doesn't happen, God made you that way. And God, God, God is not embarrassed of you. And so don't you be embarrassed about what God has done on your behalf. So you need to be in the presence of God. Just relax in his presence. People these days are so tense. There's a red light. I'm, I'm afraid. I mean, I'm just afraid to blow. Right. Oh, I said this one out. Then I got to set two, three out. I'm trying to get out of the lane, but I can't back up. I can't go around. I just have to set it out. People are tense. And, and at one while, they blame it on COVID. And I said to you then, and I say to you now, God the devil and COVID are the most lied on beings in this world. Right. How do you know? Because we have empty chairs in here. <laughs> I said we have empty chairs in here. And you know we have more members than this, right? Yeah. We have empty chairs in here. And COVID has, has spent his time here. And COVID could be with us here. But they act like COVID is not at the family reunion. Right. They act like COVID is not at the game. They act like COVID is not at any ice skating event. But let me tell you, God is not asleep. God is watching. And he doesn't have to check the list twice. He's God and he sees everything. I want to be in the presence 
of God. And you can't wait till you get to church to be in his presence. You can't depend on a preacher to get you in his presence. You ought to have some quiet time alone with God. You ought to spend some time with God and tell God the truth about it. God, I got dry bones. God, my bones are disjointed. God, I'm just, I'm disgusted. God, I'm just, I'm discouraged. God, I have been devastated. Yeah. But we call people, we text people, and then we post it out there for the world to see. Yeah. I've never understood a person writing a post. If you want to say something to me, go and say something to me. <laughs> Brother Lord, if we got something to talk about, let's talk about. I don't have to post anything that, you know, if, if you if you got a wife that you love, she would treat you right. I can just look over and say, Sister Dave, I ain't like the way you just said that. And none of you will know about it. The Lord's presence created an atmosphere around us. That even when we are in a valley of dry bone, he blesses us. The second thing we need to know, that we need to be in the influence of God. We need to be under God's influence. The text declares that I was taken away into the valley. The Holy Spirit was present with me. The influence of God on planet earth now is the Holy Spirit. God's influence is the Holy Spirit. He speaks to us. Some writer would say, he walks with us. Yeah. He talks with us. Yeah. And he tells us that we are his own. Yeah. So we need the influence of God. The Holy Spirit is present with us. You don't have to stand in the middle of another prayer line to get him. I said him. The Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit. You don't have to stand in another prayer line. To have another hand laid on you for the Holy Spirit to come in. Because if you're saved, if you're born again, if you have trusted the story of Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, you are born again. You are saved. And when Jesus comes in, the Holy Spirit comes in. God in three forms. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Jesus himself has saved us. And he said, I will leave here. And when I leave here, the comforter will come. And he will say the same thing. He will act the same way. He will do the same thing that I told you he will do. The Holy Spirit. We need the influence of the Holy Spirit. People, as I said last, last week, I just lost a cousin to gunfire. Everybody got a gun now. Everybody, everybody has one. They, they can't drive a car, but they can have a gun. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. Everybody has something to hurt somebody. And, and we are legislating it. And we are making sure that we vote it in. Where well, everybody can hurt somebody. And you don't have to. You don't have to. Braylon, you don't have to be doing anything wrong. My cousin was caught in a crossfire. Two blocks to the store and back home was the intention. One block, two blocks. Get what I want. One block, two blocks. I'm back home. Two blocks from home, going to the convenience store, he lost his life in a crossfire. And a 16-year-old need to have been at home drinking some milk or something. Should have been getting his math lesson. Should have been waiting to graduate from Gentry High School. He, he could have been studying to be an engineer, a doctor, a lawyer, a nurse. He could have been studying to be a ditch digger. But he pulled the trigger and took three men out. One life flighted. One by Evelyn. And one lying dead on the ground. Innocent. Bastard. We need the presence of God. We need the influence of God. The Bible says that the Holy Spirit was present and set him down in the midst of a valley. Yes. Third thing I say to you today, we need the revelation of God. 
says it set him down in the valley and caused him to pass round about. And behold, there were bones. God is trying to show us something. We need God's revelation. God is trying to teach us something. We got to stop playing church. We have to be the church. We have to make sure that God shows us where we ought to be, when we ought to be there, the time we ought to be there. And what we ought to do while we're there. I said to our children, bring me your report cards. I'll give you a few, few dollars here and there for your report cards. But if you can't make an A, you ought not have a, a you in conduct. Dad is saying that if you can't think it, you better be able to sit down and be quiet and, and do what that teacher say. See, nowadays parents go up and they get in the teacher's face. When I before I got home, I got in trouble at school, the teacher got in my face. And then because the teacher was my choir director, the coach was the deacon of the church. And they, didn't, they wouldn't say anything wrong or do anything wrong. At least mom and daddy had come to the conclusion they would. Even when I knew they were wrong, I couldn't tell mom and daddy they were wrong. They began to ask questions. So she lied, huh? Young man, please, however you, whatever you do, as long as you live, don't ever say an adult lied in the 20th century. And they would ask you and they would get in your face. My little 98 pound mama, five foot three mama would get in my face and so, so she lied, huh? <laughs> and look at me like she double damn me to say. <laughs> and I'm standing six feet almost. And, and I'm looking at the top of her head and she looks at me and say, oh, she lied, huh? And she said it with an attitude like, like I brought you into this world, I'll take you, you know, that kind of carrying on. <laughs> we have to listen to the revelation of God. And our respect for preachers and pastors are out the window. I know some brothers have messed up. I know some brothers have fallen short. I know some brothers have not done the right thing. I understand that. During the CD craze in the, in the, in the 70s and the 80s, uh, I would. I was the Calco kid. I was the Calco kid, and, and I had a big whip on the back of my '71 Ford Maverick. And I would sit out in the country at Markham Missionary Baptist Church before and after church, and I would key down and say, "This is the Calco kid. I am southbound with the hammer down." <laughs> And then somebody would key up and they would tell me, they would say, how many miles are you from Moorhead, Mississippi? How many miles are you from Inverness? And I would key it down and I said, I am, I am southbound with the hammer down and I'm three and a half miles just, just west of Moorhead, Mississippi on the highway three and I'm headed south. <laughs> Pastor Eddie Jefferson said, boy, before you get on that CB, you better learn your directions. <laughs> Now, I knew, I knew, Brother Carter, I knew that Highway 3 ran from, from north to south. I knew it. I knew he was wrong. See, he's from Greenville. He's from that. He wasn't from there. I knew I was right. But I couldn't correct him. And even though I didn't correct him, my granddad said, look here, boy. You don't talk to that preacher like that. It's because they demanded respect. God was trying to show us something that respect has to be earned. And once respect is earned, regardless of if you're right or wrong, it doesn't matter. Young people, you get pulled over by a police officer, it doesn't matter if you're right or wrong. The idea is to make it to the house alive. God trying to, and there's no time for you to flex your muscles. You, you, you don't have any business asking him or her why you stopped me. What you stopped me for? Your hands ought to be, I used to say put your hands on the steering wheel with all your stuff laid out on the dashboard. Now I say stick your hands out the window. <laughs> and, and be respectful. Mm -hmm. And always carry yourself with respect. Yes. God is trying to show us something. We ought to listen to the revelation of God. Ezekiel says he sent me into an open valley. And this valley had a bunch of dry bones. And God asked Ezekiel a question, the main question, son of man, can these bones live? 
Here's the respect. Thou know it. God, I don't know. You don't know. My next point to you is our faith shall be placed in the Lord, the living God. Our faith should be placed in the Lord. Our, our faith, our understanding should be placed in the hand of the Lord. He said, I don't know, but I know you do. He said, I don't know if these bones can live again. And guess what? He didn't say it with an attitude. Why are you asking me? You don't want that nothing. He, he says, God, you know. God, you understand. God, you are omniscient. God, you are under science. God, you know everything. You know these bones were going to be here. You knew that they were going to be dry. You knew there's going to be many of them. And God, you know whether they can live. Yeah, right. That's right. Don't let our smarts get us in trouble. Because right. God knows everything. Mm. So he says, he says to us, he says to us today, our faith should be placed in the Lord. The living God. Amen. The only person, the only being that can bring a dead thing to life is the living God. Right. The only thing that can be brought to life, it has to be brought to life by a living God. Hmm. The morning after pill doesn't work when God is in control. So the hymn said she heard that. So, uh, the morning after pill. <laughs> the morning after field doesn't work when God says yes. That's why we have to understand that every child is a blessing. Every child is a gift from God. Whether you were married or not, whether you got a daddy on the scene or not, let me just share with you. You are a gift from God. And God wants you to go on and do great things. Whether you got a team on your side or you're all by yourself. For when you're by yourself, God is still with you. Put your faith in God. Walk in the Lord. Bless the Lord in the process. And when you have your faith in God, you don't see what you want right now. What you want right now is not evident right now. You can't see it because if you saw it, you wouldn't have to have faith for it. Yeah, right now. But when we don't see yeah. what God has promised, we ought to walk in faith. Yeah. We ought to act like we already have it. We ought to shout like we already have it. We can't walk around and wait on God to bless. We got to act like God has blessed already because we're walking in faith. That's right. Yes. I told you, I told you when, when I, I went on my, <laughs> I told you when, when I went on my blind date with Sister Davis, <laughs> she didn't like me. <laughs> she wasn't attracted to me. She looked at my dress code. And she was like, oh, he's too young. And I'm walking in faith. She was like, I ain't got time, man. Well, I'm walking in faith. Now, let me tell you, when you're walking in faith, God doesn't have to do it because it's not about the salvation here. God wants us to get everybody to come to Christ. But the fact of the matter is, I was trusting God rather than trusting man. And then she had the nerve, the audacity to go on, to remind me, as I already didn't know, Sister Carter, she reminded me, you already have three strikes against you. I mean, she was talking trash back in the night. But here I am, walking by faith. And I, I led with these simple words. Even with three strikes against me, I'm better than any man that can ever come across your path. And I told her that as she was driving out of town. So for, for some 800 miles, she had to think about it. I didn't have a second phone. I just left her with those words. And look at her 23 years later, Sister Paul. She's still thinking about it. Those little simple words, Brother Gabby. She's still thinking about it. With three strikes against me, I'm still better than any man that will ever cross your path because I have favor with God. I'm one of God's favorites.
believing and I'm walking in faith with God. Now all she does is smile. All she does is look and smile. She's about to take the mask off for a minute, please. All she does is smile and been smiling for 23 years, but I didn't look right. But I was trained right. I was respectful. I didn't say, hey, baby, where you go, wherever you want to go, I want to go. That wasn't my line. Sister, it's a privilege to meet you. Thank you for the honor of meeting you. Sister Kendo, it was over then. For 800 miles, Sister Glover, she had to talk about it, think about it. I didn't have to repeat it anymore. I just told God, now God, I need somebody that's good for my work. Now God, I'm trusting you. And if this is not the one, shut the door. Because God doesn't have to do it the way I want it done. If this is not the one, Lord, I don't want to go through trouble, trials, and tribulation. I don't want to climb up the rough side of the mountain. Lord, if this is not the one, slam the door, shut the door, lock the door, put a padlock on the door. If this is not the one, Lord, keep us disjointed. But God, if it is, God, you do you. And, and I know that God knows how to do him. God, God knows how to do God. And, and God makes promises and he fulfills his promise. Yes, yes, yes. My faith is in him. My fifth thing I want to say to you today, in order for you to see miracles, you must trust the miracle worker. Amen. And it's, it's right there in the text. And in order for you to see miracles, you must trust the miracle worker. God says to Ezekiel, Ezekiel, prophesy to these bones, and these bones shall live. Uh -huh. Then God started talking to the bones. Let me tell you, if anybody can talk to a dead situation, it is God. If anybody can revive a dead situation, it is God. There are some testimonies in the room right now that, that can tell you I was wiped out. I had shut down. I had given up. But God revived me. And when God revived me, he did it. And now when he moves, I move just like that. So we, we need to understand in order to in order to have miracles. How many of you want miracles in your life? Miracles are things we can't do on our own. I want miracles. I want God to do great things. I, I want God to do things that I can't do. I want to tell you today, you sitting in the middle of a miracle right now. You sitting in a horse pasture that has become a soul mind. I'm telling you, you sitting right where 30 foot trees used to stand. You sit right where preachers criticize me and say, you just playing in the mud out there. But look at what God has already done. A horse pastor can become a soul mind if you call on the miracle worker. He's the miracle worker. And those same preachers mm. that saw us plying in the mud mm. has not come by one time mm. to give one dollar mm. to the cause. Because I wasn't trusting them. I was trusting the miracle worker. And if I'm going to make it, if we're going to make it in 2023, if you're going to make it in your life, you need to put your hands in the miracle worker's hand. And now you know they, they now, now you know what the critics are saying? The critics are now saying, I don't see how Matthew is doing that. And you know, I look around the room and doesn't look like all those people make that kind of money because we're not putting our faith, our hope, our strength in money. We put our miracles in the hands of the miracle worker. And they're still trying to figure it out. They still trying to figure out, even the, even the bank, even the bank that gave us a $350,000 deduction, he still said, man, I don't know why we even agreed to do that. Well, I know. Because I put my hand in the miracle worker's hand. I didn't, I didn't put the miracle worker's hand in my hand. I put my hand in the miracle worker's hand, and the miracle worker works miracle. God, go on and do you. People 
still wondering, why, why do you even think you can build an apartment complex? 150 units. When I look at y'all, y'all don't look like y'all got that kind of money. Well, I won't build it. But God will. And, and I want to tell you today, I want to let you know today, I'm trusting God to make it happen. Matter of fact, I've gotten to the point where I don't put any trust into investors now. I'm trusting God to make it happen. And when you trust God, you can't always tell God how to do it. God knows more about it than we know about it. We can stop our phone call conversation. We can stop our Zoom. But right in the right time, God is doing it because he's an on-time God. He's the miracle work. In order to see miracles, you got to put your faith and trust in the miracle work. My next point to you is, when we obey God, change happens. The Bible says that when he prophesied, when he prophesied to these bones, then the bones came to life. He says in verse 6, I will put sinews on you and bring flesh on you and cover you with skin. God makes promises. And when God makes a promise, you got to hold on to the promise. Because God says, if your situation is dead, if your situation is dry, if your situation is hopeless, God says that I would put sinews, sinews, a technical sinews, a ligament. It is what ties bone to bone. It is what ties bone to muscle. The Bible teaches that we need to trust this God because when we trust God, when we put our faith in God, God makes things happen. We've been dependent on folk to make things happen. But check this out. God is the one that makes things happen. God is the one. God, regardless of if you pray for your spouse, and I know I did. If you pray for your children, and I know I do. If you pray for people, don't trust them to make it happen. God is the one that makes things happen. When you trust, when you trust in God, when you obey God, when you obey God, God makes things happen. My last point to you is God is not finished with you yet. I, I just want to tell you, things may have may have gotten rocky for you. Your hope may be gone right now. Your job market must, must this job market is upside down and your job may not be sure right now. But I want to tell you that God is not through with you yet. You stay in his hands. Where you get that from? It's right there in the text. The text the class. The text the class to us today and he will cover them and then he will put Breath in them, and you shall live. Then you will know that I am God. God wants men, women, boys, and girls to know that He is God. We're here to glorify Him. We're here to lift Him. We we are here to give Him glory and honor. We are here to glorify him. And God will keep his promise and he wants us to know that he is God. There is no God like our God. You see, Israel always built their gods. They made them from wood or they made them from metal and they put feet on them and they, they couldn't walk. They put a chest on them and they had no heart in it. They put hands on them and, and they had no ability to feel. And then they bow down and worship their handmade gods. I want to tell you, young people, if you can make it, it's not God. Right. If you can construct it, it's not God. If you can you can write it up or draw it up, it's not God. The God that we serve has always been here. All right. He was God in eternity past. He's God in eternity, and he will be God in eternity future. God is not through with you yet. I'm not through with this chapter yet. I just got to quit. God is not through with you yet. Young man, young girl, God is not through 
with you yet. God is still working with you. Senior saints, God is not through with you yet. Let me tell you, senior saints got to get off this stuff that I'm retired. You don't retire from God. You ought to be working for the Lord. You ought to make sure that you do what God is asking you to do. And you ought to do it at a moment's No, I got a shout out to Brother Carter. I called Brother Carter. I said, Brother Carter, I need to get, I need to come and I need to leave. Can you meet me there? And he got here before I got here. Let me tell you, I, that's what God is all about. Some people want to outline, they want a narrative, they want a book, they want to know how is this going to work, how is that going to work. But when you trust God and God and you realize God is not through with you, you allow God to use you in whichever way you can. You know, some of the things we do in church was not on our job description. Listen to whiners wasn't on my job description. But I have to listen to whiners. Are you with me? Refereeing fights wasn't on my God my, my job description. But it's like one funeral after the other. I gotta run back and run here and say, oh, wait a minute, stop. What we have to realize when God is working with us, God is doing it for our good. And He's gonna work it out for our good. And when he works it out for our good, we're going to be blessed by God, and God is going to get the glory. He has shown us that over 2,000 years ago. He took his son, Jesus. We were on our way to hell. While we were yet in sin, Romans said, while we were yet in the thick of what we do, Christ died for us over 2,000 years ago on a skull hill called Calvary. Mean men beat him. Mean men hung him high. Mean men dropped him low. Mean men stretched him wide. Mean men riveted his feet. Mean men nailed his hands. He died on Calvary. They took him off the cross. Laid him in a borrowed tomb. Thank God it was a borrowed tomb. Thank God for Good Friday. Thank God for Good Saturday. Because on good Sunday morning, early that third day morning, he rose with all power in heaven and earth in his hand. My Lord and my God, Jesus himself, he rose with all power. And that same Jesus, when I mess up, when I sin, when I confess my sin, he's sitting on the right hand of the Father. He's making intercessions for me. And that same Jesus, one of these old days, that same Jesus is going to leave glory one more time. That same Jesus is going to crack the sky at the trump of God, at the voice of the archangel. That same Jesus will stop in midair, and we will be called from, from working, from labor to reward. Hallelujah to the Lamb. I will live. If I get burning on planet Earth, I'm going to live over there. From now on, hallelujah to the Lamb. Thank God for Jesus. Hallelujah to Jesus. The door is open. The door is open. The door is open. You got to trust Jesus as your personal Savior. The door is open. If you have not tried Jesus, this is your opportunity. This is your moment. You ought to try Jesus. He is the Son of God. The one who has blessed us. And if you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, just bow your head with me and, and ask Him to come into your life. Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Now come into my life and make me a new person. Thank you for saving my soul in Jesus' name. Amen and thank God. Let him in today.
Let him in today. Let him in today. He'll give you a fat brand new star. Let him in today. He turned your life. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. Let him in. If you just, if you just, if you just let him in. Let him in today. Today, he'll give you a stack brand new, brand new star. Let, let Jesus in today. He'll turn your life, he'll turn your life, your life around. All these things, all these miracles, all these miracles. love offering. You can take either of the two or both. It's your choice. If you need an envelope, raise your hand up real high and you will be served. You will be served. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. We thank you for blessing us and keeping us. We thank you, Father God, for rewarding us with financial gain. We ask you to bless us, turn our hearts toward you as we come to give unto you. Say in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and thank you. Let us recite this scripture. Let us recite this scripture together. Second Corinthians chapter 9 verses 6 to 7. Whosoever soweth sparingly will reap sparingly, will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each one must give as he has decided in his heart, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. Second Corinthians 9 6 to 7. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Bless every giver. In Jesus' name, amen. We're actually start to stand. Follow first that question from the rear to the front. Great more of the Lord's eyes off in the sacrificial gifts. We're actually start to stand. Follow first that question from the rear to the front. Great more of the Lord's eyes off in the sacrificial gifts.
will be electronic to you can give by way of Zell. Our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com is our Zell account. If you want to mail in your offering, that's how you do it. But show them how to do it. Amen. Amen. Why don't we thank the Lord for a young man that gives? Our Zell account is lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Lifting.jesus at yahoo.com. Or you want to mail in your offering, you can do so by mailing it in to P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas. P.O. Box 503, Missouri City, Texas, 77459. Lord, we thank you for every gift. In Jesus' name, amen. into this box. I want you to add your prayer list uh, in this box. And I will be personally uh, praying with you and for you. Now, if you want your, your name to go on the prayer list, I want you to put an asterisk in the corner. And then we will post it on the prayer list. But if you want your prayer just between you and God and the preacher, don't put anything on it, but put your name in your prayer request. Will you do that for me? We want to be praying and asking God to bless you and to walk along beside you. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for this privilege of prayer. There are those who are listed on our prayer list, and there are those who are not listed. We pray that you bless them, touch them, heal them, deliver them. Walk with them, Father God, that they will be about your business. Encourage them and lift their spirits. Let them know that you are God and you are God alone. We pray that you bless us now, Father God, as we lift these and bless them to give them the desires of their heart and bless them to continue to be in your presence and trust you to do great things, even miracles that we will continue to rejoice even right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and thank God. Amen. 
We have some visitors here in the back. We'll ask those visitors, Sister Horace and her team, to come come on up and and share with us before we leave today. We want this team to come and share. Share with us on today. today to talk about a uh, uh, project that we're doing with M MD Anderson. Holy Trinity uh, is uh, one of the churches that's uh, working with MD Anderson in a project called Faith. Uh, this is Families Aiming Toward Health. And um, along with uh, Pastor Davis's message today, that we want to do better. And uh, through exercise, through our diet, and uh, uh, of course, in following the word as well. So but we have a program here that will kind of help you. And we're recruiting families. And uh, I'll, let, uh, I'll let Rosa tell you more about that, uh, uh, what we're doing. So we're here today to, sign, to get you signed up. And we have some incentives for you for signing up. And as a part of the, uh, of the project, you will also uh, be rewarded for your time. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Oh. Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for having us here. I just wanted to um, kind of go off of what uh, Dr. Horitz has said. So we are recruiting families between um, a family, a parent, or a caregiver that has a child between the ages of 10 to 16 to start the uh, program. We are going to have monthly activities to kind of help us um, guide our way through trying to live a healthier lifestyle. And um, also we will have health coaching calls uh, monthly and then um, just activities and food demonstrations as well to kind of help us along the way. And I also want to add to that. Okay. So I also want to add to that, that um, if you have family members that would like to be a part uh, of this program, we can sign them up as well. And uh, because we'll give them the lessons, that w they can come for the lessons as well. And uh, they will also be called by a coach uh, to kind of encourage them, answer any questions they have about uh, nutrition or about exercise and, um, you know, and so forth. So we'll be in the back. If you have um, any other questions oh. or concerns, we cannot answer any of those for you guys. So stop by. Mm -hmm. We'll be in the back. Uh, in the four years, okay? Or in the... Uh, as soon as we dismiss. Amen. Thank you again. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So, Sahara, so is we kind of familiar with the speechless young lady that's, that did not speak today? Tell us, tell us what her name is. Oh, oh sorry. And she's a talker, too. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Another thing, Sister Harris, you said they would be rewarded. What does that mean? Oh, <laughs> sorry. Coming back. So whenever you sign up for the program, we do have compensation. We do have compensation available. Um, you will have to be eligible for you to uh, start getting compensated. We do plan to give around fifteen dollars every single time that you come and get your measurements done. And then during the months that we will be having, this is an 18 month program, during the months that we'll have, which is between the month one and month 12, the monthly classes you'll receive other instances along the way that will kind of go along with the lessons to help you out and then also continue those lessons, not only in the class, but at home to encourage also as well. Uh, and then you'll be receiving compensation during the first month that we start um, for yourself and for the child that will be involved with you for the 6th month, the 12th month, and then again for the 18th month. And do you want to say some of the incentives that we give out? I'm sorry. And the program starts when? The program starts whenever we um, collect all of, or whenever we have all of our families, just so then we all start together, and then um, we will have, like, scattered starts. But the as soon as we have, we're trying to do 32 families. As soon as we have our 32 families, we can start the program. And then some of the incentives that we have are like water bottles, and then we also have um, like little pop sockets, uh, measuring cups, and stuff like that to kind of encourage you guys. All right. 
Any questions? Any other questions? And is it Holy Trinity? Yes, ma'am. Holy Trinity. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm sure everybody like in sentences, right? So ask your questions out in the foyer when we dismiss, please. Uh, make sure you, you get any questions you, you have. And um, it's always good to be healthy. Amen. So please engage. And please make sure uh, you uh, get involved. We have our member with us today, uh, Sister Kendall. We have not seen her in a while. Well, we thank God for Sister Kendall. Amen. And often, every now and then, the bad children have to come to the principal office. So let me call those names of those bad students that have to come to the principal's office today. Amen. Immediately after service, everybody else is going to go through the four-year and sign up. And then after they leave my office, they're going to come back through here. All right. Loretta, Braylon, Hazel, uh, Sister Kendall, Jayla, Jacob, uh, Isaiah, Demari. And also Sister Glover. These are the bad students for today that need to come by by the principal's office. Did I miss somebody? The meeting. The meeting, the meeting uh, is immediately after after the service. We want to make sure that we impact uh, lives during our 30th anniversary. It's 30 years that God has blessed us with 30 years of uninterrupted service unto the Lord, amen. So we want everybody to participate, everybody to get involved. We want it to be an energizing moment. And if you're visiting with us, you can come in and give your input. We'd be glad to to uh, glean from you. So that's me today. Um, I, it was my fault that I didn't text you during the week and tell you, so blame me. Um, I, I was intent to text you in the middle of the week to let you know that we were having me today. But if you would, be kind enough to stay around and um, and let's be a blessing to this community during our 30th anniversary. As you see that the Homer Street Church will be joining us on uh, March the 12th. I do realize that it is uh, the third Sunday that is our anniversary. But this is the second Sunday. Uh, Pastor Murray Martin will be with us in the Homer Street Church. And so we're going to rearrange some chairs, add some more chairs in the room as we get close to that time. Because we want a grand celebration. Amen. So please, if you would, uh, join Sister Cora Woods and others immediately after this service. Amen. 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 So we are ready to be dismissed. If you would stand uh, to be dismissed. We don't have to be devastated. We don't have to be discouraged. We thank you that your word gives us hope. Bless us as we leave this place that we will have hope. Now to him who is able to keep us from falling. Unto him the only wise and only true God. Unto him be power, be glory, and dominion. Until we meet again, let us sing together. and vision, we are uniting the church, strengthening families, supporting schools, and empowering neighborhoods to impact the world as we are reaching souls by lifting Jesus. Jesus said, and I, if I be lifted up from the earth, will draw all men unto me. John 12, 32. You are this